color filters off and whoa watch when i turn the colors back on it's gonna look like a gamer's rgb keyboard what's up guys today we're gonna be doing another art challenge from tiktok so the other day i was scrolling through tiktok when i was supposed to be asleep and i came across this video that i thought was really cool i'm gonna let it play so that you guys can see what's going on here Yeah, I'm just gonna skip to the end because it's a bit too long. Come on now, come on. Oh, look at that. Ooh, look at that, wow. Wow. So if you didn't quite catch that, what's happening here is basically you're using a bunch of random colors. You set your iPad to grayscale mode, which means that you don't see any of the colors that you're using and you select these colors based on their values. And when you place them onto your painting and turn that color filter off, you're going to get a magnificent image of rainbow puke. So I want to try this for myself. Is it going to look like an abstract masterpiece or is it going to look like, uh, uh, moldy bread and here we are so through the magic of not running from my responsibilities i've prepared some sketches for this video now what we have to do is we have to find a color palette because i want this image to have some level of harmony i'm going to use a color palette generator but here's the catch guys i'm going to use one of my own paintings to generate this palette let's see here which one should we go for this one um i'm going to download that one now let's try some more. What about this water image here? I really like the colors in this. Oh, oh guys, look at, oh my God. Oh, this one's good too. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna take this one. Let's try another one. Let's try, what about this one? Oh, that's a nice set of colors. Okay, so I'm a fan of this one. Export, what about this? Why is it all brown? Where's the red? Okay, this one's nice. I'll save this one. Oh. Wait, I don't know, man. The The colors of water are just so pleasing to look at. I kind of like this one, too. Okay, there we go. That's our color palette. This is mostly based on some of my water paintings. And I've tried to select colors that are really harmonious with each other here so that our final painting doesn't look too crazy. But with the colors being turned off, you never really know how it's going to go. So we'll see how this turns out. And then we can try a different color palette for the next one. Let's go into our settings here. Accessibility, display, color filters, grayscale. So as you guys can see, everything on my iPad here is going to be displayed in black and white. And what's really interesting about this challenge is in order to draw your characters, you cannot rely on your colors. You can only use values. And nowadays, because so many of y'all are iPad kids, a lot of you guys skip out on the training that you need with values. So today I'm going to show you guys why this is important. Keep your brain open because there's a lesson here. Now looking at our character, I'm going to pull up a reference photo. We're just going to get started with the rendering here. Now when I'm drawing these characters, keep in mind that I am using references. If you're doing studies of any kind make sure you're referencing because boy you and i both know you don't have that much information in your brain your mental library just isn't gonna cut it let's do this dark base color for the hair we can kind of tweak the tone of it later that looks pretty good i mean everything is in grayscale but now i'm basically putting down a color that i think looks like her skin tone there we go hopefully that color is not green because i don't want her looking like shrek or maybe i do Now here's the interesting part. We're going to be shading everything that we see in this image with these black and white values. When you set your iPad to grayscale, now all of a sudden, all the colors that you have are turned into values and values are important. If you haven't learned values, what have you been doing, sir? Okay, so let's get a little bit of a shadow onto the side of her face. All I'm seeing is grayscale, but I am actually picking entirely different colors, which is it's kind of exciting. You know, I kind of want to see the final result of the, what this is going to look like. Okay, let's get the dark color of the hair onto her eyebrow. There we go. Looking good. She's looking good. So for those of you guys who don't know, this process of drawing is called grayscale drawing. And it's basically exactly as it sounds. You just draw in grayscale. No colors, no saturations, no heat 
hues. You don't have to worry about any of that. And here's a fun story, guys. When I first started learning how to draw, grayscale was basically all I did. I think knowing how to draw in grayscale helps you a lot in terms of, you know, understanding how to create three-dimensional form out of a two-dimensional image. Because think about it, guys. If you're just drawing line art, your character looks 2D. But as soon as you add rendering, that's what makes the shapes pop. So mastering your values is really going to help you with your rendering. There's a famous quote that I like to say that's from me. And that is, you can have a good painting with bad colors, but accurate values. But you cannot have a good painting with good colors and inaccurate values. I'm out here teaching the kids like Master Wugui. Now, when I'm drawing grayscale, the first thing I like to focus on is just separating the big shadow shapes from the major light shapes. You want to make this process as simple as you can. So to start off with, you don't want to worry too much about all the blending and the soft shading. Just get the basic idea down first. This is looking pretty good. I mean, it looks good right now, but watch when I turn the colors back on, it's going to look like a gamer's RGB keyboard. I also want to say that if any of you guys have never tried drawing in grayscale, I highly recommend you do it because it really is one of the fundamental skills of being able to paint effectively. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why it's so good to start drawing traditionally because you're forced to kind of start off with a pencil. All right, guys, there we go. Okay, now moment of truth. I'm going to go back into settings, uh, color filters, off. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, guys, you know what? Like it works, but I'm not a fan of these colors. The color palette looked so good, but what happened? Look what happens here, okay? I turn the saturation down and oh my God, the portrait makes sense, but turn it up. I just can't get over this blue spot on her nose. What's going on here? <laughs> but you know what, guys? Here's one thing that I think this is really good for. This can help you create some really interesting color palettes. Like if I were to run with the colors that I've created here, uh, and let's just make some edits here. Let's use the colors that we have at our disposal and kind of try to salvage this painting. She does have a water-based color palette. So I think, you know, we should really lean into that. And I think doing this part of the process will really make you think about colors differently. All right, there we go. Now take a look, guys. This is before any kind of alterations, just basing off of grayscale and using random colors. She's got a weird blue nose here, but here's the after. So what I've done for this image is I've really leaned into the cool color scheme that she has on her nose and spread that throughout the entire portrait. And I think doing this final step of editing the original image just really allows you to experiment with your colors in a way that you normally wouldn't be able to. That looks like a really cool lighting scenario. I like it. The original, I, I don't know about this one, but that, that's kind of cool. All right, you know what? Let's try another one and let's try some different colors this time. All right, guys, so this is our new color palette. I'm going to keep it really simple this time, but these are colors that I don't think you would normally use too much for a portrait painting. So let's see what kind of abomination we can create this time. So this time I'm going to streamline the process a bit. We're not going to have as many colors to choose from, but after we're done, I think I'll still go in and do some manual editing because I found that process to be really interesting. Like you don't really think about how do I apply a green onto my character's face? Like you don't really think about that normally. Most of us normally, you know, we're just working within the skin tone color range and we're not really expanding beyond that. So I think doing this as a challenge, it kind of forces you to learn how to draw Shrek. Okay. So we have a bit of a problem here. Now there is supposed to be bright lighting on this character's face, but our colors are all kind of mid-tone. So I might have to cheat a bit and use a brighter version of this color, whatever it is. See, when it comes to grayscale drawing, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm blocking out the shadow and the light. It's very important, guys, to simplify what you're drawing. Reduce the information that your baby brain has to consume. Now, here's the thing. If you're like, oh, everybody keeps saying that you should be drawing grayscale, but I just find it so boring. I don't want to do it. Maybe give this a shot because at the end of this, you can kind of get a surprise. It might be a pleasant one or it might be like, oh, but it's a surprise. It keeps things exciting, right? Pretty sure I've said this before, but I find drawing in grayscale really relaxing because you can really just turn your brain off. I'm struggling with the eyes right now, but through the magic of editing, I won't be struggling with the eyes, right? <laughs> oh. 
I'm just darkening the eyes and adding in a bit of final touches here. And I think she should be almost ready. I think I made her eyes a bit too big. She might look a little bit alien, but it might go with her color scheme. Are we ready for the big? No, we're not. I'm a little bit scared because this color palette that we've used for this character is pretty unconventional. I don't know what she's going to look like. Okay, let's do it. Color filters off and whoa whoa hang on i was expecting a lot more punchy colors but this looks like it's been put through a filter she does look like an alien that's awesome and i love the red tint in the uh, dark sections wow and guys look at the ear like this transition from cool to warm that's that's like perfectly placed that's a happy little accident right there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna put some more warm colors in here. So let's go for an orange. And really what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to enhance the colors that are already on the canvas. I'm not trying to change this entirely. That's kind of crazy to me that this entire drawing is just almost dominated by this one single teal color. All right, there we go. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. The second piece, man, I love the color scheme in this one. The first one turned out pretty good too, but I think the colors are a little bit less harmonious than what you see in this one. But overall, I gotta say, shout out to this TikTok challenge. This challenge has actually been a lot of fun. And you know what's the best part? It's so easy. I think this right here is a really good way for you to practice your values and understand how to create three-dimensional looking shapes and forms using values only, while also having a little surprise at the end. And if you want, you have the option to go into your randomly colored piece and try to make it look coherent. And I think that process is just so much fun. So this challenge gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I might do more of these in the future just to see what kind of craziness I can come up with. Hopefully you guys are inspired to go out and start a drawing of your own and I hope you enjoyed watching that process. If you guys are interested in learning how to draw with values and how to learn that process, I'm going to have a tutorial video on that on my Patreon for the month of December. So feel free to go check that out. And I appreciate all of your guys' support. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this process. Go out there and draw something beautiful. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, that's pretty good, huh? Sheesh. Bro, I just... Do everything right. What's going on? I'm perfect.